Oh, you are recording. <laughs> and if it does happen, I'm going to ask for this clip and I'm going to put it in the vlog. <laughs> beginning of the year, I'd like to have everybody tell me their name, the area they live in, and what they do for a living. There we go. Uh, yep. My name is Elia. I live in Chicago, and I am a subpar YouTuber that also creates videos for Extreme Experience. All right. On. So what originally got you into cars? Yeah, so... By the way, just for the audience, we've done this whole thing once before, but uh, I flubbed up the audio. So we're doing this all over again. So hopefully I can stay consistent with the, with the answers. But uh, what got me in the cars, obviously, you know, much like everyone else, I'm in the, the age demographic that kind of grew up with Fast and Furious. But like prior to that, uh, my first car was a piece of shit and uh, I couldn't afford to fix it. So to pay someone else to fix it. So I had to fix it uh, myself. Um, so I just learned a bunch, accumulated a bunch of tools and kind of became like a wrench car guy for a long time. Um, so just wrenching on that damn car for, for years until I got rid of it. And then, you know, carry the momentum with Fast and Furious Saga. What, so what was the first car? So the first car was a, 1999 Pontiac Grand Am GT. It was a piece of shit. It was not a good car. That motor, um, that motor is a 3.4 SFI motor. And there was like a class, act, act, class action lawsuit a long time ago where, so basically those cars have bad head gaskets. So um, they just, they don't, they're not good. So the heads warp from the heat and then you fucking cool it everywhere. Um, but the GM or Pontiac didn't change the filters in their water purifying system at the factory. So the water that they would mix in with the coolant on the assembly line had a bunch of minerals in it. So, so the, the fucking coolant water would eat away at the entire internals including the gaskets so um pr my car just leaked leaked coolant i was spending more money in coolant a month than i could have just had another car no but um it, it just ate away at the gaskets it would leak all the time it would overheat and i'm pretty sure the the heads were warped because when I went to go fix it finally, it never fixed the problem. It, it still overheated like crazy. It was a, dude, it was a nightmare, that car. So that's definitely the worst car you've owned, huh? Yeah, that's for sure the, the worst car. I think the worst car in the world. <laughs> <laughs> what is, uh, so what's the dream car? Any budget, any budget, any time period, and why? There's so many. Um, just like just one i mean give a few then if there's so many like i have one you know what i mean but um yeah. so my i changed my mind quite a bit but like any any amount of money like unattainable probably an lfa like that is my jam um if we're going like smaller scale like possibly can acquire one in my lifetime if i work hard enough Maybe a 991.2 GT3 RS. I really, those, those are my jam. Okay. And then I'll stop there. There's so many. <laughs> 69 GTO. Anyway, there's too many. What's like obtainable? One. Obtainable? Yeah. Um, well, I just recently obtained my dream car. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's perfectly done. Uh, what are the current cars? So, I can start with Natalia's. Natalia's got a 16 uh, Challenger RT. I've got my 2012 Genesis 5 liter. It's been in the family for six and a half years, still kicking strong. I mean, everybody knows I have it. I've made content about it at nauseum. I love that car. Best car I've ever bought, like my whole life. And just recently acquired uh, my dream car, which is a 2009 
uh, Corvette Z06. So that that just joined the uh, joined the fleet, if you will, and I'm super stoked on that. I'm it's, happy for you, man. I know you. because I have behind the scenes, so you know I know. The yeah, you're, you're you're one of the few that that knows currently right now at the time of this filming. So I've got to get that video out and reveal it before you post this. But um, just to kind of take this opportunity, Craig, if you guys don't know, is the most optimistic happy-go-lucky, like, motivational speaker person I know. And uh, I'm the complete opposite. I'm a realist. I'm negative all <laughs> the time. I'm angry. It's never going to happen. I got to work harder, blah, blah, blah. But uh, that whole time, so just like a quick thing, like, this was going to happen pre-pandemic. Didn't happen. Pandemic shit all over my life. And then, you know, Craig kind of, like, kept me on track with his words for a long time. Like, how long was I looking? Like, over a year and then you know i got i landed a, a job during the pandemic that kind of like lifted me out of that hole and um i was being a little bitch financially and craig kept kind of talking me out of it and here we are it's in the garage and, and i couldn't be happier so thank you craig i didn't do anything man i just was kind of help trying to help you realize like you worked for it you deserve it and at some point, man, happiness is worth spending the money on. You know what I mean? Like it's true. So, you know, I wasn't trying to tell you like sell the house and freaking buy a McLaren, but I was yeah. like <laughs> for a hundred a hundred months or whatever, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 120. Uh, 120. Oh my god. But if it's reasonable. 17% interest. <laughs> but if it's reasonable and it's obtainable and it's not gonna be, you know that issue of like oh crap i might not be able to pay the mortgage at the end like if you don't have that worry do it like yeah, yeah everything's a worry but dude tomorrow might not be there so it's like enjoy it while you can and yeah i mean there was a few little nuggets that you like said that like really triggered me you know it's like because i'm not like i'm financially able i'm just financially a bitch you know so like i don't take risks because i don't need a sport i just i just don't need one right but uh, I don't need a CTSD. I know. That's yeah. right. And and that's one of the little nuggets that kind of trade. It's like, just fucking do it. Just go have fun, like invest in your happiness. And you yeah. made it here. Reward yourself and stop being a bitch. <laughs> I mean, you're also in a situation where with enough subscribers and what's going on, like you're going to gain more subscribers probably. And then it's going to help whatever that amount that comes in is, is helpful towards paying for the car. So it's sure. it, an oppor it's a business opportunity while it's a happiness investment and that is a perfect situation for that because and that's that was another little piece of nugget like yeah i can like primary goal is to have this car to have fun and kind of reward myself but also to kind of risk it for the biscuit and like use that to kind of drive more work you know be more determined and potentially use it as a business tool to grow the youtube channel so I didn't see any downsides at the tail end of our conversation. <laughs> so um, it was just a matter of like, they're super rare in the like black because, or they just like, they flip right away. Everybody wants them in black. So I'm just like a super picky yeah. girl. So I just had to wait and wait and wait. And I, I, I mean, I got one that's like, I thought I got for a good deal and it's like bone stock unmolested and I couldn't be happier with it. So. Or it's the uh, mice infested. I, I really hope not. <laughs> no, I mean the one you looked at. Yeah, I mean that was honestly like thinking back, like that was a close because that one was like I I was going to buy that one, but uh, I just have like these moral principles that the sales guy was a jerk, so that I didn't want to give him my money. But it turns out that that car had a bunch of issues, so yeah. I'm glad I stuck with my principles and, and didn't <laughs> do that. That would have been a bad one. Yeah, that was one of the few times when you told me, dude, this was wrong. And I was like, yeah, that's not so ideal. So yeah. uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, I'm just stoked for you, dude. Like, I'm so happy. The minute that you told me, I was like, let's go. Let's yeah. go. So, you're tired of hearing my shit forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not even that. It's just like, you want to see your friends and people you care about, like, do things they want to do right you want to see somebody be successful you you're successful and 
you are that person that won't reward yourself, won't admit you do a good job. Like you're, you're your harshest critic, your biggest critic. And so to see yourself let go of that for just a little bit and to not stop signing your name halfway through the paperwork and be like, I gotta go. I don't yeah. like to see you. I mean, that did happen. Yeah. Like, good job. Then, you, you know, it's cool too. I did like, you tagged me back, right? Because I kind of pushed you indirectly via the content to buy a V and sign up for crown. And like, that was your best life experience, like top two life experiences. So like, it was cool to do that. So I know this feels good that you kind of pushed me to get a Z. So. Oh, for sure. Man. I mean, it was, yeah. So, um, well, we won't, I won't get into mods with you because that's your bread and butter for your channel. So we're not, we we're can. not going to do that. But uh, yeah. so you brought up the rally. That's perfect timing. Um, how did you originally hear about Crown Rally? Yeah, Crown, <clears throat> Crown's been, Crown's been like around for a while. And it's like, you know, you know, rallies exist, but like, I was like young, I didn't really research things I couldn't afford. Like, you know, gumball and cannonball and like crown was just the local thing. So I never really like research them. I'd see some of their like videos online and, you know, on Instagram or whatever, but like the true, like knowing what crown was about was when, so I was supposed to attend crown with my buddy Warwick, who it's a long story, but basically his co-driver like popped out because of the pandemic and they don't do refunds or something, something, whatever happened. I don't, I don't recall actually, but anyway, so his co-driver or co-pilot like backed out. So then he initially thought that uh, he, he would have me do it with him and his RA. So, and I knew like crown, crown was a thing i just didn't know like how good or like what exactly it entailed so the pandemic hit uh work was one of those guys you know and everybody's got their own opinion whatever uh but it was early so like he didn't want to do the rally basically i won't get into it but um so as nice of a guy work is he like just gave me the credentials so uh because I, i'm pretty sure like a lot of people on crown at that time were like we don't want to do this the pandemic is scary give us our money back but i don't think that they did um which is noble i mean that would have put you know the company that i worked for didn't do that either they just rescheduled for a later time so anyway so he gave me the, all the credentials i had a buddy um a former buddy back in the day when i had all the credentials um I extended it to him to do with me, but in his car, because he had just bought a car and like a year prior, he invited me to do a, a different rally in my own car. So it was kind of like a give and take, you know, he gave me that and I gave him this granted complete different tiers of rally um, because crown is much better, much more expensive, much more prestigious, but that's what friends do. Right. So as much as I would have loved to, drive the genesis on the salt flats and pikes peak and all that um i extended it to him and i'd be his co-driver it's better for content anyway right i mean that that series was dope so back to crown it's like th that's how i like really understood what the hell crown was and like just how crazy organized and like prestigious and fun a road rally could be so i i honestly i could probably say I like found out like legitimately what crown was by doing crown for free. <laughs> so it kind of like the stars align, everything kind of like aligned for me to do this, to kind of be a passenger um, twice actually on crown. And then I just like, that's how I like legit found out what, what crown was. So I'm different, right? I, if I can't afford something or if I'm not, directly involved with something i don't research it so like you hear crown you see you know when you scroll past you see some videos but like i won't do research on those kinds of things so like i was a part of it i was going to do media around the whole thing so that's when i started to really like delve into what crown was and so that's how i it's funny but that's how i kind of like really found out about crown is by doing it so okay i mean that's you know whatever works yeah, it's funny. Your life's funny, huh? 
Here's Me a free five thousand dollar rally. Just go do it. What's this? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> do it in a Chrysler. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had two different experiences. I take. I mean, <laughs> between the Chrysler and yeah. the <laughs> me, for sure. <laughs> well, uh, what do you think your favorite thing about Crown is, though? By far. <clears throat> so, like, if it was my money, which it wasn't, so like. But I can still say this, like by far the best thing about Crown is something that people like won't typically think about for a road rally. So like somebody's going to pay money to join your rally for three days. What's what's to say, like, obviously they can drive those routes, go to those hotels, you know, and do all that by themselves or with a group of people. But the thing that like separates Crown and what like my favorite thing about Crown is every single step of the way like i'm talking minute details is planned and executed like perfectly like the smallest little things right like the time frame to get to this place to this place they give extra window for eating or for if if you get to a hotel like super late because you had a breakdown they'll have staff there all night long just to direct you like this is crown they'll have flags up and they just put so much thought in like regionally specific food where, where you stop and the routes that they like go out like months in advance and scout and like put it on a little QR code on a nice laminated postcard so it doesn't get wet or wrinkled. So like you can always scan. They they do all of the, the routes on Apple Maps and you just have to like hit next and next and next. It's just like the organization and planning is by far my favorite thing that that Crown does. Yeah, for sure. It's super easy. I mean, that's what I think every everybody that I've talked to, it's like it's so mind-boggling how the only thing you really have to worry about the entire time is yeah. driving. And gas, and that's it. Driving Even gas, out. though. They, they like, the routes are like with gas stations in mind. It's like, honestly, like thinking back, it's, it's truly like, like they should be like planning shit for the freaking president or something. It's like <laughs> seriously like detailed and they're the they're the chick-fil-a drive through of rallies <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just efficient and easy to deal with yeah. yeah like we were talking about this in the car like day two we're like how the fuck how the hell did they like think that this would be a variable and then it was a variable and then it's like we really don't like we, you can be completely stupid and still find your way, like start starting grid to ending grid, like at a, you know what I'm saying? Like we didn't have to think about anything. No, I mean it was literally like, okay, I think I need to go to sleep now. Yeah, I got to get up at this time, and then it's like, okay, back in the car now we drive. So yeah, Super was, I mean, I'm. They added a day. They added one day for west this or south this year, mm -hmm. which is just a full day in autobahn. So then there's pre party night before because for ours it was the pre-party was autobahn yeah this time it's pre-party somewhere autobahn launch from chicago oh so they're doing so they're okay i mean i would have preferred that to be honest yeah so where's the pre-party where they or is that not no yet they haven't released all that so, so you're gonna you're gonna meet at autobahn that's the start that's officially the starting grid and then you're gonna start to rally from i like that better actually well so the first day is just all Autobahn and then I hotel in Chicago, launch from Chicago. I think it's the this year, day. it's yeah. Louisville and Nashville and then Charlotte. So it's interesting though, because, you know, like last year, dude, I don't know, that this, this whole thing is that I get so nervous about tracking that car because yeah. we saw the dude we talked to that guy who was driving the Mercedes GT because he fried his brakes at the track. And that's like, man, I just don't want to wreck my car, like beat my car up the day before we're going to go across country kind of, you know? It's optional, right? You don't have to do it. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so but, just, don't but it's like, man, I wish I could do this, but yet I got four more days to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's what we were trying to figure. I mean, not to get off too much off topic, but a track they should be at the end tail end because you don't know what's going to happen to your car. During well, that's why they the, if it wouldn't have rained, they had the drag strip. Drag strip, yeah, yeah. Are they doing that again? 
I don't know. They said there's two track events, so I don't know which what they are. They're they're always you know the tease. They gotta have the little secrets to reveal. Which I, like, I mean, I mean yeah, the biggest same. thing is like I was in no matter what again. I was like, dude, I have to do it. I had so much fun, and like. The crazy thing is, so the guy that was my co-pilot on the rally that we met, well, we met through because we didn't meet because the owner was an idiot and didn't introduce you guys to anybody. But uh, my co-pilot for that rally is going to be my co-pilot. Oh, is the guy in your Z51? Nice. Yeah. So it's going to be- I never met that guy. What's up? I never met that guy. No, he's a really good dude. He lives in Chicago, but uh, he- uh, He's, he's like, yeah, I mean, I had so much fun on the other alley. And I was like, just wait. Yeah. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> way better. I was like, just wait. So, uh, but yeah. Anyways. All right. So I do have a few specific questions because obviously for anybody that doesn't know, you're nostalgic. X-P-A-L-G-I-C yeah. on YouTube and Instagram. Um, so what got you into YouTube? So it kind of changed over the years, but you want me to start from like the real, like real beginning, or do you want me to like fast forward to like what I've been doing the last few years? Real, real beginning. Like what originally made you want to pick up a camera and be like, I'm going to shoot a video. So in high school, I was like super into black and white photography and I'm old. So this is like, that was relevant back then. (laughs) So for anybody that's young or like doesn't understand like everything's digital now we used to have to like take a picture on film put it under a magnifier expose it correctly put it in the chemicals and like agitate like that was my shit so uh, I did it all four years in high school and I actually I was pretty good at it and uh, I won first place in a competition in a national competition called skills USA for black and white photography actually our high school it was like I think it was like 300 high schools in the whole country, but our high school won first, second, and third place for black and white. Uh, Me being first place, thank you. So that was like, I knew I was good. I just didn't like enjoy it, right? Because it was like, at the time, Adobe was making the transition into digital art. So like, that was like the original Photoshop. And like, I just got into that. I love that, the digital aspect. But then... Um, I got a little older. I, I didn't really like, couldn't afford the crazy like digital cameras, whatever, um, to like take pictures. But then like GoPro came out and I was like, holy shit, this is like 500 bucks. I can fucking afford this. It's not a $3,000 like box that you can, you know, take digital pictures in. So I originally bought a GoPro four pictures which is funny enough but uh i bought it was like a i think it was a hero four or a three i don't remember but i sniped it on ebay and when i got it the screen was broken but it still worked but i couldn't see what i was filming but you know if you know gopros they're super wide so like you pretty much get everything so back in the day i was like super into atv so we would go to my buddy's farm. I would bring my shitty broken screen GoPro and try to take pictures, but like I couldn't see anything. So like it was in video half the time. Right. So it was like half video, half, half images. This is actually a story I never told. It started with a GoPro. I never like delved into it, but so I would have all these video clips and I used like iMovie maker and like, I really enjoyed video stuff. Right. And like, I've always liked movies. So I like, I would try to be like, cool whatever make a movie out of my atv adventure so if you go like way back in my youtube channel you'll find all those videos but uh it kind of like progressed from atvs with a broken gopro to you know shit like this these days where it's like you know 10 pounds and lugging it halfway across a across the country in a car that's doing 150 miles an hour but it just like progressed from a broken GoPro to this. And I just, I just love filming and editing. And I started YouTube because nobody was making videos about the Genesis platform, which, which nobody knows about. So like people don't do it. It's a very niche community. So I wanted just to teach everybody what I knew 
and like give the brand a little more exposure because I thought it was a badass car that nobody buys and it's a sleeper. So that's how it kind of started. Like getting into videos and get, going through YouTube was broken GoPro to accidentally taking videos to, you know, getting there and teaching people about the car and just kind of progress. I mean, the more you do something, the better you're going to get at it. And like when people, this is like the craziest thing is like when people, I never look for like satisfaction from other people. Like, but when pe- like strangers on the internet, like will say, dude, this was a fucking dope video. Like, wow, that's the shit that keeps you going. So I just invested in software, computers, better lenses, and just like gradually got better at storytelling and, you know, it paid off. So awesome. what's, your, days, what's your favorite video you've done so far? Did you ask this last time? No, I switched it up. <laughs> yeah this one's tough um just a couple maybe like three like three things tell, i won't tell you my favorite video because they all suck but i'll tell you like my favorite like the most fun while doing it filming it and editing it was this was this video we did with two old school rally cars it was an audi quattro and a lancia delta integrale and it was like a two or three part series i can't remember but me and my buddy went to do an explore of this broken down airplane in the like close to where I live, but that, that it was just a full sized passenger airplane in this field that was like an abandoned horse, like training facility. And we did a video exploring it, scoping it out, making sure we can get the, the rally cars in there. And then the next video was, you know, exploring the plane, taking pictures of the the rally cars. And then eventually at the end, they were like drifting around the airplane in this complex. That was like, that was the most fun I had, like filming editing. It was a dope video, actually. That was, I like that one. I remember. Oh, you saw it. Yeah. Yeah. That was like also the first video I started experimenting with like sound design. And uh, yeah, it was a good, good learning experience, that video. Fun times. Right on. What a, so... You got to bring this up because you accomplished getting the dream car, but you accomplished another very major thing in the last 12 months. And yeah. that was you took the hobby of doing YouTube into a career. So, yeah, I mean, you got a job working for Extreme Experience. And I mean, that's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, it's definitely like, if, if I, if I were to brag and I don't typically brag, but if I were to brag about one accomplishment in my entire life, that would be the one just because of how long it took. And, you know, I don't, I hate to be like cliche, but like, it's true. Like you feel like giving up so many times, like you're not good enough, but like, if you just shut that like little part out of your fucking brain, put your head down and just keep doing it. Like, I'm proof. I'm a nobody. Dropped out of college, like barely made it through high school. Like, well, that's not true. But I dropped out of college, you know. Um, I was actually a pretty straight-A student in high school. But college wasn't for me, you know. A, a silly little YouTuber working at a shitty desk job for eight years, like, made it to the big time. Not really, but, you know, used utilized YouTube to land a dream job. A, a, a dream job that was better even in my dreams. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy because I watched and I remember, you know, you talking to me and you're like, hey, uh, I got to go film this thing in St. Louis and I might get a job. And then. Dude, we should tell that story, actually. Just to, if one person gets some inspiration out of that story, that's it's like worth telling. But so <laughs> I I got invited. So a mutual friend who's like a big supporter of my channel reached out to his friend who is the CMO of Extreme Experience, which is like they have a fleet of supercars. They travel all over the U.S. to let people drive them on a racetrack. So Joe contacted me that's the CMO to come out to an event, uh, St. Louis that they were having. It was like one of the first events after the pandemic shut them down. So when I went there, it was for three days 
I, it was like a four and a half hour drive to get to St. Louis. I had no idea what to expect. So I just filmed everything for three days, everything I could, you know, POVs and, and GoPros on the outside of the car, track, track footage, interviews, freaking everything, everything you can imagine, cars breaking down, just everything. So that when I got back, um, I could do a documentary, a docu-series. And I called off of work for a week. And um, I just stayed in this chair, actually, 15, 16, 17, sometimes 18 hours a day to put this donkey series together just to just to package it up send it to joe just so we can be like holy shit you did all of this in one week it's incredible so because that that was my chance right this, this guy is the boss of a company i want to work for and i'm going to make shit happen so i'm going to take a chance call off of work because of whatever or work from home and do this thing it was that's what it was it was working from home but I wasn't really working. From home. <laughs> I mean, I was working just not for them. Yeah. But um, to do this, just just to send it off, and you know, lo and behold, I would assume he flipped because of his text message. But um, obviously, he liked it because he called me in the office that following Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember what it was, and offered me a job. So that little risk I took, not knowing what to expect, getting out of my comfort zone, working my freaking ass off in this dumb chair for that long not knowing what outcome you know in my head like the best the best possible outcome would be they would contract me out as a video creator like a few events out of the year I had no idea the dude was going to offer me a full-time job so it just like proves like it of course driving four and a half hours not knowing what the hell they truly want from me as a video creator maybe just a vlog on my own channel you know none of that was worth it to me i was like i'm gonna go i'm gonna film everything i can the best that i can come back here work my ass off put together this crazy series that like if you were to i'm not tooting my own horn but if you were to like hire out a media team to do what i did it would have been 10 g's like easy like easy with all with with i don't know if you saw that piece of content the the docuseries i mean that's that's some shit like you pay real money for you know that's not like typically what one guy that doesn't know what the hell he's doing do in three days and then come home and edit on this computer which can't handle it you know just coffee after coffee just just in hopes they would i would get contracted out and you know i'm i don't regret doing it at all it was like my i could not craig I like I was starting to see shit like sitting here for that long like my brain was like pulsating but I was like I gotta get this done. I couldn't think dude the docuseries like consumed my brain yeah. for a week like I had all their voices all their names like I knew their little nuances like I felt like I knew these people going over and over and over and over editing and cutting and splicing all of their interview clips like I I still like memorize everybody's interview, like word for word. It was a weird time, but it was worth it. So if anybody's like thinking, oh, it's just not, you, you need connections or timing. Yes, you do. But you also have to fucking work hard, put in the work and, you know, get creative and, and dedicate yourself to something. If you really, if you truly want something you'll you'll find a way to get it and that's that's just my two cents well didn't the series from crown west yeah out the even leading in yeah. the okay I have, I have a big big thank you to work because that's kind of what got joe's attention was the crown rally series that i did um and honestly like i would never pay i just don't have the means to like pay that kind of money to go do something for three days like that so if Warwick never like gave me the opportunity I would have never made that series you know maybe possibly you and I would have done this next one but probably not right because if you didn't see that piece of content you probably wouldn't have done it right so it's it's I'm a big believer in timing but it's like you also have to like forge some timing you know what I'm saying so yeah, so that Crown series got his attention, you know, kind of 
because he knows, right? He's a marketer. So he understands like what it takes to create a piece of promotional work, you know? So like, I was lucky that he understood what it took right. uh, because otherwise people just watch that. Like, oh, that was a cool vlog. You know, they don't really understand the time or the running around at those events trying to put a story together and then put it all together in a, you know, cohesive vlog. People just don't know. But I was lucky that he did, saw that, invited me out and yeah, good timing. That's awesome. I mean, um, so what, for you, what is the biggest challenge in trying to think of um, ideas for videos? Not for work, but just like your personal. Yeah, so I've never been a, I've never been a guy uh, that plans videos. I just, that's just not my style, right? I don't, I don't have a plan. I never have a plan. I maybe have an idea. So like this vlog I just released today, I wanted to turn the Genesis into a camera car. So that's it. That's all I roll with. Right. So like, that's the goal. That's, that's what I want to do, but not for a video. I just want to do that because I'm an idiot. So I'll just document the story as it happens. So, and that's been like the story of my life with, with anything video content related is I never go into anything with a plan because once you, so say I went uh, to crown with a plan, I would chase that plan, right? I would chase that story. I would try to manipulate things within the day to create that story. And that's not, that may work for YouTubers with much bigger followings, but that shit's fake to me. And I don't, that's not fun to create a story from. So like for the crown thing, I know we're going here, Pike speak this day. So let's, let's capture the story today. That'll be the payoff is to, you know, and that I'll tell the story exactly how it happens in a day. Fate, right? Timing, whatever happens, you know, Tim getting attacked by a killer bee. Like if, <laughs> if I had planned, yeah, if I had, I would have missed that, you know? <laughs> So that's, there's never a plan. I never really run out of ideas. I just run out of like motivation. For example, like I've had my Genesis for six years. I've made content for majority of those years and I've exhausted everything I could possibly do with that car. Like there's literally nothing else I can do unless I spend 25, 30 G's putting a turbo on it, which I, I don't have the means to do. Right. Um, so that kind of like degraded my inspiration and also getting this job is like i'm creating bangers for them every single day so like the last thing i want to do is come home and edit because i'm doing that for a living so yeah. it's a weird dynamic i didn't think i would feel like this but uh that was another like benefit to getting the corvette is fr fresh slate now i have a blank canvas i can learn stick shift i can do all those things and it's got a wide array of aftermarket support that i can play with and you know, so I'm really excited about, about that. And, uh, yeah. It's a refresh. What's it's up? Like a complete refresh for yeah, you. Yeah, it's like a reset <laughs> button. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Well, I kind of set you up for that because the question, I mean, the reason I asked that is that one of the things that intrigues me about you is exactly what you said. Like, it's not forced. So it's not fake, which everybody that watched any of my friends that have watched your videos, like even if I'm like, hey, you should check this out. They're like, dude, he's so good at telling the story. <laughs> like, because, and I, I told them like, it's just natural. Like he doesn't force it. He just yeah. picks and chooses these moments like within the, you know, the large idea. But I was like, the way he does it is just feels like a story throughout instead of this preconceived thing of like, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I like. Like, I know you like him. I know a lot of people like him. I'm not going to, like, I'm not saying I don't, but I have recently grown farther away from liking the street speed dude because it is now just over the top. It's like, so, like, I understand he has the money. So, right, like, maybe if I had the money, I would do the same shit. But I don't think I would because I don't like, like, some of this, like, jumping a Lambo over a Lambo. I'm like, dude, we need, I mean, we need, we need those people on YouTube though. Cause no, I know that. And I appreciate, like, I appreciate the entertainment value, but I'm like, I remember when he first started 
And it was like telling kind of like telling the story of like his car and like getting stuff fixed. And I was like, okay, I enjoy this because this guy's authentic. And now it's just like this forced production thing. Of yeah. like, like, I know he's a goofball, right? Like, I know he would do that. But it's just like, I don't know, man, there's something about it. So like, I set you up for that question because I kind of was like trying to get you to say like, yeah, I don't, I don't. But the thing that's challenging, right? So for me, I don't have a bunch of buddies that I go driving with, right? So um, a lot of times I'm free, they're not free. Or I'm free, but they're driving with their Porsche club buddies and yeah. <laughs> not trying to go be this dude that's like half a mile back or a mile back when they're going through twisties. Um, but it it becomes this thing because the car is fixed. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I don't work on that car. I like it the way it is. I like, you know, we did the transformation, but it's a challenge. It's like, how do I come up with something that's intriguing to people that doesn't feel like this? Really? Like you shot that? Yeah, forced and planned and yeah. So it, it's interesting because it's like, how the hell do I pull this off without like, I don't know, man. It, it's you're an action person and I'm like a sit down and talk person. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, so for for the majority of view viewership on YouTube, they enjoy the sit down talk. Cause I can tell you like the big YouTubers don't don't typically do styles of videos like mine, right? But I just I don't care. I just that's what I like to create, so I will. But I mean, how many, how many YouTube car YouTubers that you follow really like do anything other than talk about something you know it's like never it's never a cohesive story nobody does that I just I feel like I'm filling this void and hopefully it'll like reach right. somebody somewhere you know and because I mean, that's it I like to watch you know like the effort like just to see the effort on screen yeah. rather than and I'm not <laughs> I'm not bashing you because you're just you're like learning no but yeah like you know it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, the big thing is, is I don't work on the car. So it's like, how do I give you action when I'm not the one doing it? Like, I can't, those those guys at, like, when they powder coat the rims, they're not going to be like, oh, yeah, come on back here with all these toxic chemicals in this dangerous, like, environment, and we'll break all the OSHA rules and our insurance policy, and we'll have you film. Yeah. Like, I mean, you, you know, just, it's not a reality. So you can make, you can make, an entertaining story about nothing i've done it before i mean what i think is entertaining right like it like turning turning the jenny into a camera car that shit's not fun to watch <laughs> like it's it's just it not. Entertaining. i watched it earlier it's just a bunch of suction cups and poles but like you have to find a way to like tell it you have to like kind of be like able to laugh at yourself in that particular situation because i failed you know and like tell it tell it like that because i did fail i went to go fly a drone and it fucking rained so it's like you have to like you know well, you just other, to like figure it out as it happens you know another thing that you mentioned to me like in a text from due to that video that's kind of funny and goes back to previous <laughs> combo is or topic is you're like yeah this guy reached out to me and he's like i'll help you and it's a dude that you met pretty much through crown rally who's like I exactly. mean, yeah. yeah he's i mean he's one of the best guys ever so ever ever i, mean, I think he's one i think he's like one like one of a kind though for 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 the record i don't i i don't think that typically happens you know what i'm saying i think just that he's just a good dude so but yeah. hey I, like you said i wouldn't have met him without you know drinking to your grandparents <laughs> <laughs> in nashville wherever the fuck we were <laughs> you met him before filming the gladiator video yeah 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 but no yeah i mean the uh, adding to the cup definitely i guess helps solidify that relationship <laughs> 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 who else can say like remember that night we drank to that guy who went to bed's dead grandma yeah <laughs> uh <laughs> but no yeah that's i mean i just wanted to ask that because it, it's it is seriously like it's frustrating to me starting out because it's it's you watch somebody like like Wheeler Lambo dad who has a limo that he's pimping out. 
he just bought a brand new Lamborghini and they just have fun. You know what I mean? Like, but he's got this wingman. So he's got Bud with him. Who's like this perfect relationship with him. So even if nothing much is going on, they're joking back and forth. So there's this interaction. Yeah. And, uh, like, you know, he's, he's genuine. So like he told me something that they're doing and um, I know that it's just them. That's their personalities. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know that's just his personality. It's not, what can I do to get views? Yeah. Just yeah. him being like, well, I'm bored. So let's go do this today. <laughs> that's how you build a loyal following. Though. It's, it's, yeah. people will come for the, for his Lambos and his limo, but they'll stay for him and his, buddy, yeah. and his chemistry with his buddy. You know, that's how you build a loyal following. You yeah. can jump Lambos over Lambos all day and get, two three million subscribers but those people aren't going to watch every video they're not going to buy all your merch you know what i'm saying right so right. yeah for sure so all right um so rapid fire we'll we'll wrap this up all right let go. um go to drink to have in the car on long drives i don't remember what i said last time oh, white wow. monster i think it was a white <laughs> yeah. monster well, no you carbs. can't do the same thing because it's not like I remember or they they know. <laughs> White monster. I got I got two seconds into reviewing that video with the repeat audio and then like, nope. fast forwarded through and still there and still I was like, oh. yeah. And then of course we started talking to JTP and things went off the rails and stonks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, must have item in the car. Phone. Okay. Uh, best song to drive to um i think at that time that i, I said avici like nights that song is timeless piece rip dude yeah, yeah that's a good song i love that song you don't have to repeat it again you can you no, can. gotta stay consistent it's what we talk about stay true to yeah. yourself uh worst ticket you've gotten if you've gotten one in the house yeah it was a speeding ticket through a construction zone that was a bad one Okay. So what did they clock you? So the cop was like super nice. I didn't realize how fast I was going because I was just like, you just jam out and there's nobody on the street 3 a.m. But because there's cones in the fucking highway, it's a construction zone, even though nobody's working in it. I think I was going like, I think it was like over 110. Yeah. But like, you, you know, you just go, there's nobody on the street at 3 a.m. There's not construction workers just because there's cones there it's not a, whatever but uh yeah he, I, I think he was pacing me that's what it was he was pacing me like over 100 and uh i think it was like a 55 45 55 or something like that and uh i was just like super nice to him he was like a like a polish guy with a super thick accent and uh he like he he wrote me up for it wasn't it wasn't for, what did he write me up for? That's what it was. He So it wasn't for speeding in a construction zone. He wrote me for following too closely. So he's like, this is a bit of a break. I was like, yeah, cause like there's no cars on the highway who, you know, <laughs> he's like, just take it. You know, I was like, thank you. I appreciate it. Cause it would have been a very, very hefty tech ticket speeding in a construction zone, like big time. So he, he cut me a break. So whatever, I, like legit, I wasn't like, I, I don't speed through construction zones, but it's just going home you know just good music just pedal a little heavy didn't realize it okay i got what is the favorite car related movie sex drive that 69 gto is fucking badass <laughs> funny movie too okay uh biggest pet peeve related to other drivers the uh left lane losers dude i hate that I hate it. Yeah. Um, would you buy an electric or hybrid in a so oh. one? No. Okay. That's that was easy. Um, <laughs> what is the ugliest car in history? The the Nissan Murano Cabriolet or wow. some shit like that. It's so bad. It's worse it. than the Aztec. You changed it. It was the Aztec last. No, time. no, it wasn't. It wasn't the Aztec. Uh, it was the Nissan Murano. Cabriolet, that, that thing is, <laughs> I don't know what Nissan was thinking with that thing. It's, 
absurd. <laughs> oh, so, burnout slash smoking the tires, cool or not cool? Pretty cool. <laughs> I know you don't like it, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't hate it. It's it, every video I say the same thing. It's just a matter of I don't like going through tires. You know what's funny is the Jenny tires are cheap, right? They're like two seventy fives. <laughs> the vet has three twenty five, so I <laughs> I don't think it's cool anymore. <laughs> no, that's it's not I'm cheap. Thinking. Yeah, and you also have to get good tires for the vet. Yeah, so you have to be in like the pilot sports or like you know something that's not freaking like because you want reliability and you want to be able to know that it can maintain a certain speed and not have yeah. issues so that's why i'm like yeah i don't want to spend 1600 dollars every two months because i'm burning out i may it's, do one for the reveal video but we'll see well <laughs> the best thing so far was uh wheeler was like yeah they're cool and then um bud the guy that always with him is off camera, hands him a piece of paper. He unfolds it. It's an invoice for 24 tires. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I've watched Bud go through like brand new tires in two minutes. <laughs> oh what does he drive? Uh, I believe it is a Hellcat Challenger, the Demon. He has a Demon? I think so. And he's doing burnouts and demons? He's, he's got money. Be, a red eye but i think oh yeah okay he's got 900 horsepower so that's got to be the demon right i think so yeah and i'm pretty I know. he just drives a demon just to drive a demon those well, are like collectible it's daily it's not a daily driver oh but I he's mean, still doing burnouts in the street in a demon that's a gangster right there yeah 24 to 24 tires for it <laughs> that's crazy um Okay, what is your motto in life? Yeah, I think I said it. I mean, it changes, but like, if you want something bad enough, you'll work hard enough to get it. So, right plus on. timing. Timing is like everything. It truly is. You okay. forge that timing. Yeah, I mean, you have a way of hitting timing. I I'm just lucky sometimes, bro. I don't know. I don't know why it is, but hey, I'll take it. Yeah. It's like, uh, all right, here's the Crown Valley West. I think it's just because I'm a good dude and I'm not a complete jackass. Yeah, no, dude. it is. It totally is. I mean, you're deserving of everything you get. That's always been something I believe in, right? So I appreciate it. if you're a scumbag, you're going to get scummy stuff. You're not going to get, you're not going to catch breaks. If you're a good human being, you're going to catch the breaks. I mean, it's, you know, I agree. dude, karma is it's real. real. Yeah. Anybody that says I don't believe in karma is going to fall down the stairs when they get up and walk away. Well, <laughs> like, let's hope not. But. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is real. So, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. I won't go into it because if, if I get into the motivational and yeah, we'll, positive, we'll trigger some people for sure. No, I'm saying if I get into my positive motivational crap, it will last for 17 hours. So, I won't do it but yeah no you're a good dude and yeah I mean that was what I was you're hesitant to admit it because you don't like tooting your own horn you're very humble you don't try to ever let your ego be fed and it's like everything that happened like with the job I was like dude that's awesome you're like yeah I don't know if I'm gonna get it and I was like you're gonna get it and then same with the vet like you're like oh man I don't know and it was just, you're a good dude. Reward yourself. You work That's hard and you deserve it, you know. So Thanks, man. if there's anything out, and there's nobody that's met you that was like, yeah, you are the real jerk. Well, well that, nobody I, that you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same for me, you know. I mean, maybe you have met people that know me that have told you like he's a jerk, but well, no, that's definitely not. Yeah. But then again, I don't meet anybody, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, but. Yeah, I don't know, man. Well, um, plug any social media you want or anything you want. And I'll yeah, put go, my go check out the Caddy Shack on YouTube. Subscribe. Turn on that bell. They're already on here. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> I got nothing. Actually, you know what? Go go to xxspeed.com. Go check out who I work for. You know, if, if you've always wanted to drive a supercar, 
on a racetrack. We're all over the place. So it's not that expensive either. So go check it out. This is just going back to what I just said about, you know, like tune your own horn. So uh, whatever. you're going to be in the, <laughs> I am <laughs> putting it in there to make sure people go check it out because I love it. And I mean, I'm stoked, especially now you got to get more subscribers. You got this new car that you got to. We'll, that's, we'll see. Uh, it's a whole new audience that I need to please. And we'll see. You don't need to I'm excited. Though. You don't need to please anybody. You Chevy just, guys are weird, right? Because then you get Ford guys in there and then you got to, then you got to be really careful. Plus it's a manual and nobody ever on the internet can drive, can drive a manual correctly to everyone. So. Dude, nobody can ever drive correctly to other people. Like nobody can ever wash a car properly. No, sure. that's I. I learned my lesson. No more detailing videos. Oh, I wasn't. I didn't. I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about like I do. Like spent thousands of hours watching YouTube, like watching stuff, learning stuff, and I could wash a car, and somebody will be like, "You did not." It's just it's inevitable. Yeah, People for sure. Want to find something wrong with everything you do? Yeah. And those are the people that don't have good karma and fall down the stairs. Those are the same people that don't know what they're talking about either. Yeah. So. so, well, I appreciate you doing this, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It was fun the second time, too. <laughs>